starvation. Division. I see in the not remote distance one great nationality, bound like the shield of Achilles by the blue rim of ocean. I see it quartered into many communities, each disposing of its internal affairs, but all bound together by free institutions, free intercourse, free commerce. I see within the round of that shield the peaks of the western mountains and the crest of the eastern waves, the winding Assiniboine, the Fivefold Lakes, the St. Lawrence, the Ottawa, the Saguenay, St. John, the Basin of Minas. By all these flowing waters in all the valleys they fertilize, in all the cities they visit in their courses, I see a generation of industrious, contented moral men, free in name and in fact, men capable of maintaining, in peace and in war, a constitution worthy of such a country. Shamrock of Ireland, a land that I love so divine, send the English back where they came from, make our land ours once again. Give me the Irish Republican Army to make our land a nation once again. When we see how delusion at this side of the Atlantic begets delusion at the other, how the state organisers profit by the plunder of the confiding ignorant. When we see how the dupes who really run risks are egged on in Ireland to their ruin by knaves who lie up in clover on Manhattan Island. When we see Irish patriotism paying for a palace in Union Square. When we see the treachery that betrays the sworn brother to the outraged law. What else can we feel but indignation against the author of such madness and misery and infamy? They the authors of a liberation of Ireland. Why don't they liberate the Ireland at their own doors from the poisonous and murderous surroundings of the tenement houses of New York and Boston? Why don't they liberate their own Ireland from sanitary destruction? That Ireland in America, which, according to the New York Times, contributes 88% of the deaths of children on the whole number of deaths in that great city. They liberate Ireland. Why don't they liberate those children of a larger growth, worse than fatherless, who were swept daily from among them to the far west, there to undergo the fate of changelings and apostates among an alien people? The New York Protectory, established by sane and good men, to diminish the swollen volume of Irish vagrancy and juvenile crime, has asked the other day for $28,000 to carry on their work. There is a chance to liberate that part of Ireland at all events. Why don't those insatiate patriots lend a hand there, where they can be of use? Why don't they try to liberate the Irish labourers in New England, where they rank in the social scale just below the Negro, and hardly above the beast they drive for their Yankee bosses? There is a work for them to do, if they were only honest, and if they only tried. But I admit, there is one objection to it, insuperable to the Fenian mind. It is practicable. It is possible. There it is avoided and despised. These liberators, Mr. Chairman, are held out by a portion of the American press as a menace to us here in Canada. And it is alleged, moreover, that they have many sympathisers, if not actual associates, among the Irish population settled on this side of the line. I think they set down their force in British America at the exact figure of 45,000 men. Well, sir, all I can say is, if the rest of their figures are as near the mark as these, 
they're a very formidable body of enemies to the truth. The Fenians in the United States, feeling in their hearts for all the fustian of the glorious republic, that they are not really at home there, feeling that they have not conquered for themselves a new country in the new world, may try to solace themselves with a conspiracy in lieu of a country. But the Irish in Canada, 